Welcome to another video. This looks very tiny and easy to do, but if you do not know what to do, it becomes very hard, almost impossible. And by the way, no matter how skilled you are, you have to know how to integrate secant cubed. You have to also know how to integrate secant if you take the strategy that I'm about to show you. You have to know how to do integration by parts. Definitely you do. But you have to know that that's what you need to do because of when you get there. However, if you want to avoid all of these, you have to memorize some things. There are some integrals or antiderivatives that you should memorize. And I'm going to write two of them for you because I'm going to use them without me computing them because I'm trying to show you that it is better to have them memorized than go through the pain of solving or integrating them when you get a problem like this. Okay, two things you must know. You must know that when you integrate secant x, that you are going to get this answer, the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x. And there are five different ways you can write this. Okay, so that's number one. So this is the most common one because you can easily remember it because the derivative of secant is secant x tan x. So it's easy to remember, but there are four other ways you can write this. Number two, you must know what this secant cubed x dx is. If you integrate this, what would you get? The answer looks like this. And I promise you, it only uses these two things. Your answer is one half of secant x tan x. It's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x. Don't forget this one half. This and this, have them memorized or get ready to go through the process of integrating secant cubed and integrating secant x. Integration by parts, u substitution, and rationalization. Okay, so it's better to just have this. They're very similar, very easy to remember. Okay, that's that. Let's go back to this problem. Now, I decided to do all of these because when I get there, I'm just gonna use the formula. Okay, so here, what would you do if you see a problem like this? Do you rationalize? No, because I tried it, it didn't work. So what I'm going to do is try to attack the denominator with a u substitution because when you're easy to move around with a denominator, you can think of a u substitution ultimately. And sometimes, you, you remember, u substitution always takes what's on top, especially for most functions. Okay, let's just get into the video. So what I'm going to do first is do a u substitution. As I promised, I'm going to say that let u be equal to the square root of x plus 2. Now, remember I am trying to replace everything that has x with u. So I have to free this x. That's the first move you have to make. So you say u squared equals x plus 2. Because when you free this x, you can generate this again. So I'm going to say, um, if I move this 2 over, I know that u squared minus 2 will be equal to x. But I need to get my du dx, right? So if I differentiate this implicitly, it's going to be 2u du equals, I differentiate this, it's just going to be dx. So I'm going to go replace this dx with 2u du. So I'm almost done. 
What else do I need to do? Oh, I need to generate this. Now, what I have is just u squared minus 2 equals x. So I need to do x plus 1 and take the square root. So what would x plus 1 be? If I add 1 to this, it means I'm going to add 1 to this. So it means u squared minus 1. It means u squared minus 1 will be equal to x plus 1 because I've added 1 to both sides. And now if I take the square root, you see that? So what I have is all of this will become the integral of, this is now square root of u squared minus 1 divided by, what is square root of x plus 2? Um, it's going to be u multiplied by dx, but my dx is 2u du. So this u will cancel this u. Nice. So that what I have is 2 times the integral of the square root of u squared minus 1 du. So this crazy thing has easily become this. Now, this is something you should always do. Whenever you see a variable squared minus 1 or minus a constant, you should start thinking that this u must be secant because secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. And you can then do whatever else you want to do with it. So you can always say, I'm going to replace my u squared with secant squared. So your u is secant. And that's what formed, what informed this. Because we're going to eventually get there. Wow, I feel so bad that I have to erase what I've written already. It looks so beautiful. Let's get rid of it. So remember, anytime you see secant squared, I mean u squared minus 1, x squared minus 1, secant is what you should use, unless you find another way to go about it. But let's say you don't know what to do. Secant is what to do. Okay, so we're going to say let u be equal to secant theta. We're going to be using theta this time. So we know that du is going to be, what's the derivative of secant theta? It's going to be secant theta tan theta d theta. And that's it. So we're going here to do our substitution. So we have 2 times the integral of square root of u squared minus 1. That's going to be square root of secant squared theta minus 1. And we're going to replace du with this. You see, secant squared theta minus 1 is an identity. It is tan squared theta, right? So I'm, if I remove this and write tan squared theta, the square root of tan squared theta is tan theta, right? Well, it's plus or minus tan theta. But when I do my u substitution, just to be safe and I don't have to raise this question and answer it, I will just tell you that my theta I'm talking about is in the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, everything is positive. You remember. Okay, so I'm just going to say that theta is in quadrant 1. Okay, so this makes me avoid the question of, oh, is it plus or minus? No, no, it's no longer plus or minus. So put this just to avoid any questions. Now, your tan theta is what replaces everything that's here. Now, this tan theta is multiplying secant theta, tan theta, d theta. You see all that? Okay, let me just rewrite this. So, this is equal to 2 times, this is now tan theta, integral of tan theta times secant theta, tan theta, which is the same thing as tan squared theta, secant theta, d theta. That's what we've got. Okay, so what can I do with this? Now, I would say do a u substitution or something, but it doesn't look like it's going to work because if this was squared and this was not squared, 
then we can do a u substitution. But this is squared. There is no way I can make this work. I have to rewrite tan squared theta as secant squared theta minus 1, as if we're going back to this. But we didn't have this before because this just showed up. Okay, so what we're going to do is say this is equal, let's write it here. This is equal to 2 times the integral. This tan squared theta becomes secant squared theta minus 1 multiplied by secant theta d theta. Okay, so if we distribute this, we're going to end up with 2 times the integral of secant cubed theta minus secant theta d theta. And now we can split the two integrals into two separate ones and then integrate them separately. Now, if I didn't know what these integrals were, I would struggle through integrating them, but because I already know, I don't have to struggle. That's why I said you have to memorize those integrals that I wrote initially. Okay, so we're going to write them out now because I'm going to integrate this, integrate this with respect to, to theta. What do we have? Our answer is going to be 2 times 1 half of secant theta tan theta plus, I'm still on this one, it's going to be plus one half of the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tan theta. I have just written the answer to this one. Now we're going to do minus. The integral of secant theta is the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tan theta. Okay, ah, close it, plus c. I need to put my plus c there. Okay, so this is what we have. Now, we know that this and this are the same thing. This is just one half, this is um, negative. So if we take one half of this, we're gonna end up with just one half of it left. I think I'm going to just shrink it and make this a minus. So if we add this to this, we're going to end up with minus one half of this, and we erase this and have enough space to write plus c. So this is what we have, and if I multiply everything by two, it looks like this is going to disappear, and this one half also is going to disappear. So this is what we're going to have. We're going to have no one half, no one half because of this too. We are done with our integration struggles. Okay, remember what made it short was because I just wrote this out. If you have to do the integration, it's a longer journey, especially for both of them. So now we have to go back and go back to our theta. What was it? I mean, go back to x. Secant theta was u. But what was u? u was square root of x plus 2. So it means that what I'm having here is the square root of x plus 2 multiplied by the tangent of theta. What is tan theta? We have to go back and figure out what tan theta is. Oh, remember, we said tan theta is um, secant squared theta minus 1, that identity. So we square secant and we subtract 1. So let's go. We're going to square this. What do we get? x plus 2. Subtract 1 x plus 1. So that's it. And then we take the square root because that's tan squared theta. So tan theta is going to be the square root of x plus 1. Nice. And you can actually multiply these two together, but sometimes it's nice to let what you started with show in your final answer. So we're going to go minus the natural log of the absolute value of, we do the same thing, um, what is secant? Oh, it's here. It's right here. Square root of x plus 2 plus square root of x plus 1 plus c. Is there anything else we could do to make this look nicer? You can turn this into a quadratic, but I'm going to leave it that way. And this It looks weird, but it's true. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living.
Bye-bye.